for the introduction. Okay. Uh, once uh, a famous Formula One driver said, if everything is under control, you're not moving fast enough. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you. I'm going to talk about logging at scale using Graylog, 100,000 messages per second, billion plus messages per day. So what is Graylog? Graylog is a log management open source software that actually works. It has search, analysis, alerting, and a lot more. But before getting into Graylog, um, how many of you over here are, are Ola users? Anybody? Okay. Uh, so Ola is an app-based taxi booking platform. So you can just install your app and anywhere in India, in 100 plus cities, you can book cabs using your mobile phone. It has millions of users. It is a majority market leader in India and uh, millions, millions, million plus bookings per day. So all these good things eventually translate to technical scalability challenges on the engineering side, including our centralized logging platform, which has the characteristic of all the three V's in a big data problem that is volume, velocity, as well as variety because Ola is internally powered by a lot of microservices generating their own data, generating their own logs. But why Greylog? Let's look at some of its features. It has a great UI, best for viewing logs. It is designed for logs. So you, as you can see it over here, like in the left hand side, uh, you have a different keys present in the log if the log is structured then you have uh, in the you have a search search bar and the and the search results on the right hand side of course uh, we can build beautiful dashboards it has support for a lot of different widgets like the count widget uh, the quick values widget and so on but the best thing which is like the usp for me I like about uh, Greylog is that there's just one single place where we can do everything. If I'm a user, I can log in and do my RCS based on the logs generated by my application for any issue. If I'm an admin, I can do, uh, do a lot of my management stuff on Greylog as well. So uh, Greylog is in turn powered by Elasticsearch, uh, where all the data are stored and it does query Elasticsearch for the results. and Managing Elasticsearch at scale itself is a huge pain if you have handled Elasticsearch. So it gives me some manageability of Elasticsearch. Like in this example, I have a configuration for storing 100 billion messages in Elasticsearch at any given point of time. If When it crosses, the indexes get rolled over and the old ones are, are, are deleted accordingly. Uh, it has it can take inputs from a variety of sources and send output to a variety of destinations. And so I can probably take input from a TCP port, a, an HTTP listener, Kafka, Syslog. There are various input sources and uh, various output sources as well. It can do real-time log analysis and alerting with a feature called streams. So you can think of streams as like a separate pipe add it to your input input where you add some filter and you get this filtered stream to do your log analysis probably dashboards alerting whatever you desire to do so uh, with all these features we were very happy and we decided to go go ahead and give Greylog a try but of course uh, we had a learning curve, like scaling from almost zero to what it is today. It's a journey and I want to share the challenges and other things we faced while doing it. So what was our initial design? So uh, we were just moved, getting started with microservices. 
which, uh, we, Docker is something which powers the containers and uh, it is managed using a Mesos Marathon cluster. So our applications run on Docker which generates log and the final destination of our logs are the log cluster which is like the square rectangle you can see over here. It is tightly coupled with Elasticsearch. It has an API and a uh, UI. So, uh, but this is a new design and we wanted more reliability. We have not yet tested uh, Greylog. So, for adding reliability, we, we added one more layer, something called Kafka. So, these are the three main components. My log source is Docker. Kafka gives me a reliability and the final destination is, uh, uh, is Greylog. Now, Docker applications are generating log in standard out and we collect the logs using a Docker log driver. We chose Fluentd log driver so that we can directly send the logs to the next component called Fluentd producer. Fluentd, producer, Fluentd is a log aggregation platform so we can collect messages from a variety of sources and send it to a variety of destinations. It is collecting the log message from Docker in a TCP port and sending it as it is to Kafka. Kafka is a pub subscribe system uh, which can which is which can consume messages from a variety of producers and send it to a variety of consumers. So uh, all the messages are received at Kafka and we have a retention on that. Since it is a pub subscribe system somebody needs to consume it. So we have a Fluentd consumer which consumes the messages from Kafka and sends it to Greylog. A bit more about Kafka, the reason for using Kafka, we chose Kafka because of uh, multiple reasons. One, it is a tested reliable source. Second, uh, if I want to do a maintenance on rest of my cluster, I can just uh, pause consuming messages from there, do a maintenance and start using it again. If I lose messages by any chance, I can replay the messages. If uh, I want to have a long-term archival in a long in in some other storage, I can take another pipe from Kafka and probably store it in a in a cheaper storage system like say S3. And if I in future if I want to move on from Greylog to something else, I can again take another pipe from Kafka and design a completely new logging search platform keeping the existing system running. So Kafka Pro gives us a lot of flexibility in that sense. So finally the message is sent from Kafka. Over here Fluentd consumer also does more another job. That is it formats the messages in GELF format, Greylog extended log format before sending it to Greylog so that it can index it properly. So this is the final pipe of initial design. We'll simplif simplify this a lot. So this was done. We tested it on staging in a week's time and it was also moved into production. All good. But we ran into our first problem. That is, there was a huge lag in the, in the Greylog cluster. Why was that? Uh, we, in the we found that the Fluentd consumer had huge log buffers. Fluentd itself is a fast system, uh, but uh, we, were, we were having a huge buffer over there, but that doesn't, didn't seem right because Fluentd is sending the messages to Greylog over a UDP, over UDP protocol. We thought of networks to be reliable, so we used UDP protocol. So Fluentd should not be a problem because UDP is an acknowledge, doesn't even require acknowledgement and message should be first. So what we did, we initially uh, upgraded all the surrounding, like we upgraded Kafka to the latest version at that time, which was 0 0.9. We upgraded uh, Greylog to the latest 2.0 beta version at that time and Elasticsearch to the latest 2.3.1. It did not solve a problem. 
it turned out that the plugin, Fluentd plugin, was a slow plugin. So adding more CPU, RAM, or changing the environment did not help. So what we did to solve this problem, we removed that component altogether. Uh, instead of uh, Fluentd consumer sending the messages to Kafka, uh, so to Greylog, uh, at the source itself, we are formatting the messages in GELP format and sending it to Kafka. And Greylog is consuming directly from the Kafka as a Kafka, GELF Kafka input. So case one solved. Now more apps got on board it. We have all everything running and suddenly we, suddenly we get an alert. Docker service crashes. The process itself crashed and uh, so, and when Docker service crashed, all the apps which are running in that, all the containers which are running in that box crashes. And this is a huge problem. We are running, we are serving our live customers, right? So, uh, the reason behind the crash was like, uh, was due to buffer getting full. The Docker was sending the log messages to Fluentd, and since we, we more and more apps got onboarded, the log volume increased, and the buffers were getting full at Fluentd. So the Docker was crashing, complaining of complaining buffer full, but this seemed odd because because probably it should log the error that the buffer is getting full, but not crash. Crashing is something very serious. So what we did, we did some research on the over the online. We read a lot of articles, and we decided to upgrade Docker to the latest version, that is 1.11, and also ran, uh, also started using the latest kernel 4.2. Did it help? Yes, it did help. Instead of uh, our Docker service crashing every four hours, no, it was cra crashing every five hours. <laughs> but. Uh, the problem was not solved. So what we did, let's remove all the fancy stuff. Instead of sending messages to a TCP port, we start logging natively uh, using the default log driver JSON file, and we tail the messages instead of uh, instead of receiving it at a TC, uh, as a TC, in a TCP port. So Fluentd is now tailing the log messages generated by Docker, and not over the TCP. So now, uh, Greylog, uh, Docker daemon is not directly related to the Fluentd or the rest of the pipeline. So I removed that, and the problem was solved. Now, uh, more, few more apps got onboarded, and we ran into a next problem. That is, huge lag in the UI in the Greylog again due to 3 MB log message. So a single log message line was of size 3 MB. Uh, what was the problem due to this? So Elasticsearch intern is powered by something called Lucene. Lucene has a value field limit of 32 KB. So when it received a message of this 3 MB, it, thro it throws exception of the exception saying max message size limit reached and this exception is cached by a Greylock server and it retries the message five times with a wait of 30 seconds in between before before discarding the message. And the rest of the pipeline is blocked. So until this message, message gets discarded, more messages cannot come in and our pipeline is blocked, leading to a huge lag. Of course, we did send the uh, uh, send the log log line message to the developer and they fixed it. But we wanted to solve it at our end as well, for a f for a future for being future safe. So what we did, we started truncating the message. The solution was simple. We started truncating the message at the source. So if the message field is greater than eight KB, we truncate it to eight KB. Now we have smaller message sizes. So able to small index small messages, the problem was solved. What was the next problem? Now Greylog is getting popular. Uh, there are multiple teams using it and they are seeing value in it. Some of the non-microservice based uh, developers also wanted to use Greylog. So we started, we deployed uh, Fluentd which tails 
the application logs directly into traditional boxes which are not powered by docker and we started sending those messages to the pipeline but uh, we ran into an issue S uh, since we we are now telling application messages directly which which are in json format applications are applications uh, can generate message in uh, can generate message differently so for example one application may say success as uh, status as success another may say true some application may say it as integer say like one and these these json keys are mapped in elastic search with a data type so the first time elastic search received receives a key it, it attaches a data type to it and the next time if the if it gets another data type it throws an exception and gray log is again retrying the messages before sending more messages uh, before discarding the message and there's a choke so what we did uh, we converted everything into string so right at the source at fluentd it will send only string messages to the pipeline and the and there will be no different data types no exceptions and the problem is solved now every time we had a problem uh, we had to dig, dig into multiple places like uh, fluentd had a buffered kafka plugin uh, uh, kafka itself has a uh, retention and graylog ha also has something called journal again a form of buffer so whenever there is a lag we'll have to look at different places to figure out what is the area of contention but is bu is buffer required uh, at every level we asked ourselves this question and the so, and the reason was answer was no fluentd is telling the log files and it stores the offset so the file itself can act as a buffer so we disabled buffering at fluentd kafka is a pub subscribe system and we need it for a variety of different reasons as i told and of course we need retention over there we config configured a two day retention over there graylog graylog uh, has something called throttling option so if elastic search is not able to cope up with the speed at which graylog is sending the message it can slow down and consume messages from kafka slowly so to match match up with uh, elastic search so again we can disable journaling over there so with this uh, it it simplified our debugging process as well as uh, reduced lo load on our servers now uh, more apps got on board it we are dealing with higher scale we started facing something called missing or delayed logs what was the problem uh, the problem was a slow kafka uh, slow fluentd plugin again so a fluentd plugin for kafka it was designed to be simple but not fast we adding more cpu or ram resources did not help so we were looking for alternatives luckily i found some found a project called heka heka is a mozilla sponsored project and uh, it is written in go so with this our uh, it was 5x cpu friendly 10x memory friendly and it was without losing messages so the missing slash delayed docker logs problem was solved finally uh, we have a centralized logging platform so every time any problem happens everybody is blocked so centralized solution is also a centralized source of problems we wanted to decentralize the second part so what we did like there can be contention at any level like uh, at probably kafka there may be uh, contention at graylog or elastic search anyway so what we did to decentralize the problems uh, heka is already distributed because it is running as one process per box if we want more reliability on heka we can add more cpu and C cpu powers uh, we wrote uh, we designed a plugin to add log bucket support so a group of applications will write it to 
one topic in Kafka, another group of applications will write to another topic. So in that way, it is, it is dividing the logs at the source and sending to various Kafka topics. Kafka is a horizontally scalable cluster, but we decided to uh, do it topic wise. Like in a big Kafka cluster, we chose say five servers for topic one, rebalance the partition, five servers for topic two, rebalance the partition in, and so on. So we have a topic based sub clusters. So if any contention happens on Kafka, it will be limited only to that particular topic. We dockerized Greylock. So uh, since it is a stateless server, a stateless application, it is not storing any journal. We can we achieve to, we can do dockerized and we achieve elastic scalability. So we can just click, scale it to 50 if I want more resources, scale it back to down down to 10. Elasticsearch, again, we separated as per requirement. Like there can be multiple Greylock clusters and with a, a Greylock configuration, we separated as required, if required. So with this, we achieved uh, horizontal scalability, not just by the applications, but also by design of our pipeline. Who likes it? Developers, because they are doing, able to do quick RCS. DevOps, we get more time to sleep, and management loves it because of lovely dashboards. So that's it. Do you have any questions? Um, so you were talking about fluency is uh, slow. Uh, maybe could you like give some metrics about like why it's slow? Like uh, what was the maximum limit it could handle? Uh, maybe like one thousand. 10,000 per second or something. Okay. Uh, so I would say Fluentd itself is not slow. It is super fast. It was the problem with the plugin. So uh, the Fluentd Kafka plugin is written in Ruby, which translates to Kafka, which is more more Java friendly. So there were two plugins. One for uh, one in written in Java as well, which is designed to be fast but it was not <coughs> it did not support sending messages it supported only consuming messages from on the met, on the metric side uh, heka with heka i've i've done million request per minute as well from a single box it can do more if i increase the cpu cpus if i allow it to use more cpu cores Fluentd was probably uh, getting limited at 5,000 or 10,000, something like that, uh, per, per second or something something similar. But I don't exactly remember the metric. Any other question? Uh, yes, then the other thing about Kafka, do you scale it across data centers? Uh, no, actually, we have not. Uh, we have uh, kept it uh, at one data center itself. Uh, but yeah, we uh, we can pos we can definitely do that. And if you if you want it, say uh, for uh, DA requirements, if you want it across regions, so we can also configure it like uh, the replicas in Kafka. The primary is in data center one. The replica is in data center too. But of course, this will also add cost. Within a data center, network bandwidth may be free. Yes. And if you are doing it across zones or across these regions, due to this humongous scale of terabytes of data, you may incur a huge bandwidth cost. So we, we are not doing that as of now. Need a question? I uh, have a question myself. So, how hard have you pushed this in production, and then what kind of logs are you processing? How hard? Well, uh, the scale which at which which I'm talking about right now is actually six months old. Now it is it has grown 10x. Mm -hmm. So 
so like emulsions right now that you're ingesting through HECA and then ultimately storing Elasticsearch in the mm -hmm. What sort of volumes are we talking about on a daily basis, monthly work? Okay, in the daily basis it is in the tens of terabytes, uh, which is coming to Kafka and being stored in Elasticsearch for dif different clusters have different retention. So we uh, we configured retention in Kaf in Elasticsearch based on message count instead of uh, time because message count is more uh, like absolute in terms of terms of size. In terms of, if I store it in terms of time, it would be variable because new applications may get onboarded, my logging volume can get doubled. And the size would be, in Elasticsearch would be in around more than, like in hundreds, hundreds of terabytes being stored at Elasticsearch. And just to follow up, in this scenario you just mentioned, how big is the Kafka cluster, how big is the Elasticsearch cluster? Okay, so Kafka cluster is a 15 node cluster. We are using right now divided into three subtopics. Like the first five is used for one topic, two second five to ten are used for two three topics. The last eleven to fifteen are used for another set of topics. Uh, Prelog servers, there it's, uh, it's dockerized and the collective would be a, more than a terabyte of RAM. And uh, Elasticsearch again is uh, is in a lot of boxes. Like uh, you can think of fifty anywhere between fifty to hundred, something like that. And each of them, all of them are big boxes. So yeah, it from infra wise, it is a big cluster. And we have tuned a lot of different uh, settings at each level to do with this case. And can you share a little bit more about the use case? What kind of logs you actually uh, you know, talking about tens of terabytes? Yeah. Uh, what's what's generating tens of terabytes here? Okay, as a as a platform provider, I don't really worry about what kind of logs applications generate, but uh, applications of uh, are of uh, different types. Like the the there are booking applications which take bookings service discovery applications which discover what are the caps around this particular location in my, uh, at, at this point. They can be payment uh, related applications as well. All of them log, uh, are generating application logs which are useful for debugging, not really data, data related logs. It is, it is more, more aligned towards application logs. And then there's a variety of that. Any more questions? Okay, cool. Uh, one last one question. Last. Yeah. Sorry, I have to ask so many questions because um, I'm actually also going to face a similar problem as <laughs> you. <laughs> yes. uh, so, um, this last one is uh, for the hacker side, the uh, uh, producer side. Um, would it have the same effect if you use uh, Node.js with the clustering? Clustering functionality, the clustering clustered Node.js. Because uh, Hacker is uh, using Go uses multiple CPUs, so I think the Node.js clustering also use uh, multiple CPUs. Will yes, in theory, will it achieve the performance? Yes, actually, uh, the real pipeline starts from Kafka. So. Inputs can be in multiple forms. Uh, there are also an, uh, more multiple inputs. Like I'm also, re for example, receiving <coughs> inputs via TCP uh, by another plugin. Some applications are also sending it directly to Kafka. So as long as you send the messages to Kafka in the GEL formatted message, all is good. You can send it from any you can replace the first component with anything you like, anything you are comfortable with. Uh, you have mentioned both multiple applications they send this kind of log files. Uh, did any of those applications need uh, during this uh, setup of the infrastructure, did they know any of them need to change his uh, log structure? No. Because... Uh, 
Yes, it is transparent. So, in the microservices model, like uh, all the applications, we just instruct them to log their uh, to log in standard out. So that is all they need to do, and the log driver will collect the standard out and write it to file in a structured format with add with some added metadata. We are doing we are handling those those parts. So for application developers, all they need to do is log into standard out and rest everything is taken care of by this pipeline. So the filtering is being done by Prima. So like, uh, that's what we're doing from the structure by Prima. So we're doing it on Grelog. Yes, like uh, the structured message is sent to, finally sent to Grelog and Grelog, once it is so stored in. Grelog, not the yes, we can do filtering on Grelog. Thank you so much, Rahit. Thank you.